I appreciate you coming out here. My name is Brian. I'm on the product team. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, bringing some responsibility and security layers to our industry with proof of reserve. Uh, this is a passion area, I would say, for myself. Um, I first kind of discovered the need for proof of reserve back in the Mt. Gox days, and one day maybe I will get some of those back. Um, Two billion dollars of crypto has been stolen in 13 bridge hacks. 69% of that was stolen in 2022 alone so far. Proof of reserve is an important piece to start fixing these critical issues that we have in the ecosystem. Without it, there's a lack of transparency. There's a loss of user trust, bringing unmanaged protocol risk, and we all love composability. So ecosystem and dependency risk is big. Ryan says it best. Leaders, exchanges, custodians, start using proof of reserves immediately. You can look at the date and figure out why. So I bring a little bit of somberness to this awesome conference because this is important. Proof of reserve is having a bit of a heyday right now because everyone can understand and relate to the needs. If you do not have proof of reserve across the ecosystem, we all see what it can lead to. What is proof of reserve? It's the definitive way to prove any asset's true collateralization on chain. Simply, we count things, we verify them, and we match. Where does this apply? Personally, uh, our team thinks about this in two segments, two categories. Issuers, you can think about them as creators, and then protocol consumers. So these are stable coins, um, you know, both fiat backed and token backed. Uh, uh, tokenized real world assets, wrapped tokens. So these are people that are creating these assets. Then once these are created as a protocol, I might be interacting with these assets cross bridges, in my exchanges, and on other DeFi platforms and protocols. Kamal did an incredible job yesterday at the product keynote talking about um, real world tokenization and the huge opportunity we have still ahead of us in crypto of bringing real world assets, you know, gold bars uh, and vaults and similar things. What I want to talk about is how we, as an, org, uh, as an ecosystem, can implement proof of reserve in your DeFi protocol. And the reason I want to talk about this specifically is this audience online is more likely to be interacting with these assets than creating them. But if you have a use case for either, we still would love to talk to you. So I'm going to walk you through a really quick example. I am a DeFi developer that interacts with WBTC. I want to verify that WBTC is backed by the Bitcoin reserve, and that reserve is sufficiently collateralized with the outstanding WBTC supply. So wrapped asset across Bitcoin and Ethereum. Why? So I can reduce my risk avoid transacting with under collateralized assets and take action if needed. Great diagram from uh, the awesome product marketing team here at Chainlink that simply shows how proof of reserve works. As the asset vault changes, the Chainlink distributed Oracle network or DAWN individually calculates, verifies and reports on the chain, so as, re uh, as reserves you know, increase, as reserves decrease in real time, we report this to be consumed 
by the protocol. When I said individually calculated, that was intentional. It is important to highlight that every node that is participating in a proof of reserve is running individual network nodes that it is reading from. So for this example, WBTC, I believe there's 10 nodes that are running BTC nodes and individually calculating the addresses and UTXOs to be able to report. So as I walk through this example, there's four key steps of bringing proof of reserves to your contract. We're gonna import the proof of reserve price feed. We're going to get the reserve and supply value. We're gonna compare it, and then if necessary, we'll take action. So here's Solidity Contract. This might be you know, your boilerplate uh, that's interacting with uh, WPTC. I'm gonna add three lines of code. This might look familiar, and you heard me say pr uh, price feeds. That's because Proof of Reserve is built on the backbone of price feeds that is both convenient and intentional. Price feeds is a hard and proven technology here at Chainlink with uh, an immense number of consumers already consuming them. We're now enabling Proof of Reserves using price feeds. But also, as a developer, it's really easy. So in three lines right here, I'm now able to consume the price feed for WBTC. Now I'm going to get the reserve and the supply simply in these next few lines jumping down. I'm going to compare those values. As I expect, these values either match or exceed, but let's say worst case, it is under collateralized. I then take action, and obviously your contract is going to be more robust, but in less than 50 lines of code, I now have a full example where I can consume price feeds that are proof of reserve and take action on them if absolutely necessary. So if you can't tell, I think this is a standard. I think users are going to demand this, and I think as you as responsible protocol developers are going to proactively implement proof of reserve. So we have you know, the secured with Chainlink proof of reserve badge that you can, uh, you can get, as we've talked about all conference. Um, but I also think it's really important to highlight, you might be working with unique assets. You might actually be in implementing a token that needs a unique proof of reserve asset. Max, who is also speaking later today on a proof of reserve roundtable, myself, a few other folks on the team, we'd love to talk to you, talk to you about how to bring on proof of reserve if it's a new, unique asset, but if it's, a, uh, if it's already consuming a, price, uh, a, pro, a proof of reserve price feed that is out there, those documentation is already out on the web, but feel free, come talk to us at the uh, proof of reserve booth. Appreciate you talking to us uh, and listening about Proof Reserve.